this time, this astrological period in history, is called Kali Yuga. It's a time where the materialistic mentality becomes extremely aggressive. And the spiritual life becomes very vague and confusing for the people. So, about 5,000 years ago, many saints, sages, yogis, Brahmin priests, thousands of them, 88,000, they all assembled together in a very important holy place in India called Naimisharanya. So they understood the principle that we should try to learn from that person among us who is really the most advanced who is the most experienced, who is the most learned, who himself has been trained and educated very lovingly by his spiritual masters for many years. And so from amongst them, they selected the most qualified person in that assembly. And his name was Sutta Goswami. Sutra Goswami, he was the son of Roma Harshan Sutra. So perhaps you know there was a pastime that once Lord Balaram, he went on Parikrama, visiting holy places. And he came to Naimishanya and there Roma Harshan Sutra was speaking to Puranas. Because Srila Vyasadeva, the compiler of the Vedas, he had five main disciples. So, Jainini Rishi, Paila Rishi, Sumantu Rishi and Vaisampaya. To these four main disciples, he gave each one, one of the four Vedas. And then to Roma Asham Sut, he gave all the Puranas and educated him in that. So when Balaram arrived in that assembly, all the sages stood up to respect him. But Roma Harshan Sut was still sitting. He didn't get up to honor Balaram. So Balaram is Akhand Guru Tattva. He is the original, wholesale, complete aggregate of all gurus. If there's any guru, it's only because that person has some portion of the power of Balaram. So because Balaram was disrespected, he approached Ramahashan Sutta with a piece of kush grass and he poked him and Ramahashan Sutta fell dead. The sages cried out, Alas, alas! Now from whom will we hear the Puranas? <laughs> From whom will we hear the spiritual histories? Balaram said, All right, if you're not happy with that, I can bring him back to life. No problem for Balaram. It's a small thing. Then the Savior said, No, my Lord, your will is supreme. You are independent. What you have done, you have done, and we don't want to reverse that. But please make another arrangement by which we can hear the Puranas. So then Balaram called the son of Roma Harshan. He was a little boy. And Balaram put his hand on his head, Mangalam Bhavatu, and blessed him. And by the blessing of Balaram, he became Ugrasrava. That means one who has a tenacious hearing capacity. If he would hear anything once, he would remember everything. So, that uh, young 
Sage. He was present when Shukadev Goswami spoke to Srimad Bhagavatam to Brikshit Maharaj. And he heard everything and he remembered everything, word for word. Everything. So now some years later, the Kali Yuga was just starting. All the sages were really worried. They thought, uh oh, the world was okay during the Sati Yuga. It started to lose its purity in the Treta Yuga and more in the Dwapa Yuga. But now, the Kali Yuga is coming. It will be terrible. People will be in complete ignorance. They will be killing cows and eating meat and having abortions and taking drugs and they will be atheists and all kinds of terrible things like democracy. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> they were looking into the future and they were feeling very sorry for everyone. Who were they thinking about? You. They were thinking about you. The difficulty is that you will have to face born into a completely confusing world with no di idea which direction to go. So, those sages had assembled together out of compassion for us, the future generations. Here we are, 5,000 years later. And receiving today the benefits of their compassion. So together, now Sutta Goswami was older, he was quite old. And they approached him and they prayed to him. Vaita Twam Somya Tat Saravam Tatvatas Tadanugrahat Guru Yusnik Dasasisasya Guru Vogu Yamupiyata. They said, Oh Somya, oh you have a most radiant and pacifying countenance. Somya means someone whose face is like the moon. If you have some mental anxiety and you go and you bask in the moonlight, then you become peaceful. So they're saying, Sutra you are such a sage that when we see your face, all of our problems are worse. We feel cool and peaceful. We know that you understand the tattvas, the principles of reality. What is this life? Why do we exist? What's the purpose? How can we attain our perfection? So, Bru Yusnik Dasasisasya Guru Vo Gutam Mapiyata. We know that because you were Snigdasya Snigdasya that means a very affectionate disciple. Snigda means affection, but the literal meaning of Snigda is uh, soft and greasy, like ghee. <laughs> so generally, people are these days quite uh, prickly, quite spiky, <laughs> and harsh. Mm -hmm. They can have very harsh reactions and mm -hmm. difficult to deal with. Yes. But they say, no, no, with your guru, you are not like that. You were snigda, smooth like you. Whatever guru said, you listened. Whatever he told you to do, you did. You were completely submissive to the will of Guru and served with the complete affection. Like Srila Bhakti Nautaku has said. Shakti buddhi hi amiyati deen kormure atmasat. Oh Guru Dev, I have no power to move a step on the spiritual path without your mercy. I have no buddhi, spiritual intelligence. Please, Koromore Atmasat, by your mercy, make me Atmasat. That means, 
that I have no independence, that I am completely submissive to you, that my heart and your heart become one. So the saying, Guru Yusnik Dasasi Sasya, because for many years in your youth, you served your spiritual masters with extreme love and affection. Therefore, Guyam Apyuta, we know that they must have told you all confidential knowledge. Just like when a calf comes to the mother cow, if you try to milk a cow, it's quite difficult to get the milk flowing. Just bring in the calf and the milk starts flowing by itself. So, the humble and affectionate disciples is like a calf, very eager to receive the nectar and nourishment of a transcendental harikata, pastimes of Sri Krishna. And when the Guru sees such a disciple, his heart melts, and then the nectar begins to flow, just like milk coming from the mother cow. So, they understood this principle that if someone has, is such a satsis, the bona fide disciple, and has such a sub guru, bona fide guru, and they serve humbly for many years, there's no question, there's no doubt, there are no two ways about this. But that person has in their heart the guya, <coughs> transcendental, confidential realization of the spiritual world. So the disciple should be like that. And the guru should be empowered like Sutta Goswami. Sutta Goswami describes in the third canto how Vidura approached Uddhav in the same way, very loving way, and asked him questions about Krishna. And when Uddhav heard these questions, concerning Krishna and his associates, then Uddhav just, his eyes closed. And for 24 minutes, he was in Samadhi. He went into trance, only hearing the message. So then Sudha Goswami said, Shanaka Bhagavan Lokan Nilokan Puna Agataha Netrevi Mritya Vithuram Pritya Oldava Utsmayam Which means Shanaka Bhagavan Loka Very very slowly Uddhav Niloke hmm? Puna Agata Again return to this world From the world of Sri Krishna Bhagavan Sri Krishna the spiritual This is good that when the disciple posed the question, he went into trance and he went to the spiritual, to the plane of Krishna. Then Shanaka Bhagavad Loka, slowly, slowly, he came back to this world. Vibhmritya Netra, he was wiping his eyes because tears were coming. Tears of love from that deep internal experience with the Ram, Kritya Uddhava Utsmaya. And then Uddhav spoke to Vidura to answer his questions with great affection and he was smiling. Why was he smiling? Because when he went in Samadhi in trance and he saw Krishna's pastimes, then Krishna came to him and said, Hey, Go back and answer Vidura's questions. He's waiting for the answer to his questions. <laughs> and then when Buddha opened his eyes and wiped away his tears, he saw Vidura in front of him. He said, oh, how merciful Krishna is to this person. Therefore he said, Samsara da vanaladi daloka chanaya karunya ganagana tram praptasya kalyana gunanavasa vande guru sri charnaravinda that the mercy that comes to the disciple from the Guru is coming from Krishna. 
Hey, look up. Come back and answer the question. So one day we all see each other now. So all of those sages in Naimishranya, when they approach Sutta Goswami, they pray to him like this. Bruyusnik dasya sasya guru ho guyam piyata. We know you have served your guru. We know that he has revealed to you the transcendental world. We know that you can see Krishna. We know that you have a dual passport, one for this world and one for Goloka Vrindavan. And you are coming and going every day in your meditation. We know all these things. And that's why we want to ask you some questions. This is Guru Tattva. What it means to be Guru? What it means to be? Satsis, real disciple. There was a spokesperson, spokesperson on behalf of the 88,000 rishis. And that was Shonaka. And he posed questions on behalf of every And he had six questions. And these six questions, the answers to these six questions, are called the Srimad Bhagavatam. The whole Srimad Bhagavatam is the answer to these six questions. And these six questions are extremely important to everyone. Some of them, one or two of them, an ordinary person may feel it's not so relevant because they don't have the background. But most of the questions are any everyone will be very eager to hear. What's the answer to that So the first question was, what is the Sreya Uttama? What is the topmost Sreya benefit or auspiciousness for every living being? Everyone is in motion. No one can stay still for a moment. So we're doing things which are either beneficial for us or detrimental to us. If we don't know what is really our ultimate benefit, we may be doing something which has short-term benefit, but ultimately is a disaster. So the opposite of Shreya, Shreyas, is Prayas. Prayas means your short-term benefits. Like getting paid. Like retiring with a good pension. People have different ideas of what it means for their short-term benefit. But he's not asking about this. We are Atma, we are the soul. We live forever. You're not going anywhere. You're all going to be here forever. So the question is, where are you going? Where are you going to spend eternity? <laughs> Have you decided yet? So if you've decided that you want to be liberated from this material world and attain the eternal blissful spiritual abode where there's no suffering. How do you get there? Are you living in such a way that you're making progress towards that divine atmosphere? Or are you living each day of your life like a silkworm turning around and making a cocoon that eventually traps him that he can't get out? So unfortunately, most people are living like that. Their karma, their activities is ma are making more karma and it's binding and binding them until they're completely trapped in a state of misery. So, it's a very important question. The first question is, what is not prayers? It's short-term benefit. What is stress? What is the ultimate benefit for all living beings? Then the next question, equally important, fascinating, and 
a question that many people want to know. They asked, what is the essence of all religious scriptures? So this time, most of the scriptures that people know now haven't even been written. But still, there were many Vedic scriptures. Upanishads, Vedanta, Puranas, Four Vedas, Mantra, Brahman, Samhita, Aranyaka, sections of the Vedas and so on. So there was already vast religious literature and there were so many different opinions. So I just want to know, if you've read everything three times and you've understood it, what's, what do you do? Just give me the two long din breathe. Just give me the TLDR on this. What do I do? Yes, I don't have time to read all these vast library literature. So that was the second question. The next question, so the Shaunaka Rishi was very interested to hear the pastimes of Krishna. So he threw in a question. He said, for what reason did Krishna appear from the womb of Devaki as the son of Vasudeva? Why did Krishna appear in this world? Indeed, please tell us. The pastimes of the, of the Supreme Lord, how He assumes the form of the Guna avatars, Brahma and Shiva and Vishnu, and creates the world. So they also wanted to know about the creation, this world. Where are we? What's our context right now? Then, the fifth question, please tell us about the various avatars, because the Supreme Lord over millions of years in different yugas is appearing again and again in many forms. Please tell us about these forms and, and what they have done. And then, the sixth question, the final question, Krishna comes to this world and he protects religion. Yada yada hi dharmasya glane bhavati bharata abhyuta nam madamasya tadatmanam sujamiham pritranaya sadhu nam vinasya tatuskritam dharmasam stapanataya sambhavani yugeni. See, Krishna said, when religion is going down and sinful activities are rising, at that time I descend myself to protect the saintly persons and annihilate the miscreants and to establish Dharma religious principles in the world. I appear age after age. So Krishna was the protector and the shelter of all Gyan knowledge and all Dharma religious principles. But the moment Sri Krishna's lotus feet left this world, then psh, Kali Yuga began. So the sages are asking, where did Dharma and where did Gyan, where did knowledge and religious principles go to take shelter when their actual shelter, Sri Krishna, disappeared from this world? So to this question, Sutta Goswami said, Krishna is Vadhamu Bhagate Dhamma Gyana Dibisaha Kalona sta gashamri sha parana ko duno ditaha. Oh, when Krishna went to his transcendental abode, at that time he took Dharma and Gyan with him. Then where will one find knowledge and spirituality in this plane? Now we are bereft of the presence of beautiful, merciful Lord Krishna. So they say, Kalona Star Risham Mesha. In this age of Kali, the spiritual vision of all the people has been destroyed. They're blind. But, Purana Kaud Duro Muditaha, the Srimad Bhagavatam has risen like the sun to illuminate the entire world. So the Srimad Bhagavatam is actually. 
Krishna Vanmai Murti. It is the sound or narrative incarnation of Krishna. Krishna's Vanmai. Vanmai means made of sound. Vanmai Murti. One type of Murti is the deity in the temple. But there's another. There's a sound of Murti of Krishna. And that is Sri Madhavad. In other words, I'm sitting here. You're sitting there. You're sitting there. But when someone's speaking Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna sitting right there. Don't think. Don't have any doubt. When you hear Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna is with you. And you can see him. Tom Bhakti Yoga Paribha with the Ritz Roja Asish Tits the Patan and Nata Boots. Yad Yad Diyata Durgaya Vibhava Yanti Tatan Bhapu Pranaya Say Sadhanu Rahaya. Lord Brahma said that when you hear the Srimad Bhagavatam with your heart saturated with feelings of devotion to Krishna, then that very form of Krishna to whom you want to render service. Let's say if you have a mood like Madhya Shoda and you want to feed baby Krishna, then if you have that mood, then when you hear Srimad Bhagavatam, then Shutekshita but now you don't see through your eyes, you will, your ears will turn into eyes. And by hearing, you will see. And that form of Krishna, that little baby will come. Oh, Mama, I am hungry. Or, if you want to serve Krishna like gopis of Vrindavan, then very beautiful, romantic, gallant hero Krishna, he will appear. <laughs> very strong, charming. And that Tadvapu, Pranaya says, the new not only by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam will you see Krishna, but also you will be endowed with a beautiful spiritual form yourself with which to serve Krishna. You cannot serve Krishna in this Swiss sorrow. <laughs> In Vrindavan, in the spiritual plane, you need to have a deha, a suru, which is, which fits in there. As a gop or a gopi. So simply by hearing, not only does one realize Krishna, but also by hearing, one spiritual form comes so we can directly serve. So, therefore, the Srimad Bhagavatam, in this Kali Yuga is our shelter. And it is arisen like the sun to dispel all darkness and give all perfection of life. So, six questions. When the Rishi is headed by Shona Karishi, post these six questions. Then, now Sutta Goswami will give the answers. First of all, he did not begin to speak. First of all, he folded his hands and remembered his guru, his spiritual master. No one can speak Harikata. Harikata is Krishna. The pastimes of Krishna are, the discussion of the pastimes of Krishna are Krishna's pastimes. If someone is speaking, but they're not realizing, then their speaking is rajasic in the mode of passion. They are confused, they are blind. Actually, they don't know what they say. So, it is said, part ute, part ute. Means, when the description of the pastimes, part ute, the recitation of, of Srimad Bhagavatam Krishna's pastimes begins, then Parda Bhute, then the curtain rises. You know if you go to a theater, you sit down, the curtains are closed. And then the, the orchestra in the pit, they start tuning their instruments when they're all in 
to and then they the conductor comes here. and he begins and the music starts and then the curtains rise and when the curtains rise you see there on the stage another world and the actors come on and they begin to perform so it is said parute parute when a pure devotee begins to speak the Srimad Bhagavatam, then the curtain rises and the audience they see the first times of Sri So this is actually Harikata, speaking Harikata. The speaker, speaking Harikata, the past times of Krishna is a seva, it's a service. Why? Because Krishna was in Vrindavan teaching. What past time shall I do today? And then when the speaker begins to speak according to his inspiration, then Krishna does that past Or sometimes Krishna is doing a pastime and inspires it in the heart. So either the speaker makes Krishna do the pastime of lifting Govardhan Hill, stealing the clothes of the unmarried gopis, or stealing butter, or playing his flute and collecting the cows. When the devotee begins to speak, Krishna does that pastime. Or sometimes Krishna does that and the devotee is feeling and he begins to speak. So, no one has the power to actually speak unless they're fully Mahatmanas to Mamparta Daivim Prakritim Asrita. Krishna said the great souls, they are under the shelter of Daivi Prakriti, the transcendental energy. Then actual Harikata is So Sutta Goswami, he's not jumping into this thinking, I memorize so many verses. Now I'm going to impress everyone with my memory. <laughs> no, no. He's, this is the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yagya. The Yagya of Srimad Bhagavatam. It's a service by which Supreme Lord appears in the heart of all the listeners. It's a very serious. So for that we need Kripa, we need mercy. So at once. Sutta Goswami folded his hands and remembered many years before when he was sitting in the audience when Prakshit Maharaj only had seven days left to live and his guru Shukadev Goswami was speaking and he began to pray Yam pra prajanta manopita mopita kritam dvai paya no bera khatara adhuhava putra iti tanmaya tayotara bovinerus tang sarva puta ridhyam munimana tosmi or, I bow down to my Guru Dev, Shukadev Goswami. As soon as he was born, he didn't hang around. He just left home without looking back. He was not entangled in any worldly karmas at all. He was a Mukta Purusha, liberated soul from the moment he was born. He went directly to the forest. His father was running after him, come, come home, come back. But he never looked back. Only the echo came from the trees. So, he's remembering that the speaker of Sri Bhagavatam is a Mukta Purush. So this Bhagavatam, he has nothing to do with this material world at all. It is completely transcendental. This subject is the post-liberation subject. It is the discussion for Paramahamsas, those who are already free from ignorance, who already have no ego, have no bodily identification, who are so transcendental, just like a drunk person doesn't know whether his shirt is on or his shirt is off. So those Paramahamsas, they're not even aware whether their body is on or their body is off. They are the Adhikari for understanding the Srimad Bhagavatam. They're the beginner class. That's the beginning class for this Qatar of Srimad Bhagavatam. Dharma Pradhita Kaita Votra Paramone Matsaranam Satam Vedyam. Second verse. 
the, this understood by the Paramahamsas. But you can take heart that Sadyo Ritya Bharudhita Though when the Paramahamsas hear it, they immediately see Krishna. You may not be Paramahamsa. Highly unlikely that you are. <laughs> but it's so powerful. If you will hear it, though you may not see Krishna immediately, if you listen with faith, you will see Krishna sometime quite soon. Not immediately, but after a little time. If you are Satsisya, real disciple, and you hear from Sadhguru, real Guru, little time, not to So, Sutta Goswami is praying to Shukadev Goswami. My Guru Dev was such a person, liberated from the day he was born. Then he prayed again. Yaswanu Bhava Makila Suti Sara Nekam. Adhyatma Deepa Utitisita Sam Tamanda Samsari Nam Kuruna Eya Purana Buya Tambyas Suna Mupayani Gurum Munina. I am bowing down to my Guru Shukadev Goswami. Though there were thousands of people in the audience, with Parikshit Maharaj, many Munis from all over the universe, Vishwamitra Muni, Vashishta Muni, Gautam Rishi, even Narada and Vyasa were there, his own Guru and Param Guru. But actually he became the Guru for everyone. Even his own Guru and Param Guru there became... had no realization listening to Shukadeva Goswami. He had Swanubhav. He realized everything. Every word he spoke, he was seeing it. When he spoke about the Rasavila, when he spoke about Krishna playing his flute in the moonlight, and gopis dropping everything and leaving their homes and running to meet with him, he was there. And he was seeing it all. And he, he was importing it. He was downloading it from the spiritual world and speaking. So, Ya Swan Baba Akila Suti Saraneka. Adyat Madhipa. He spoke such a kata which was like a, a lamp which illuminates your heart. When you do the Yajna, it rains. Adyat Madhipa. Atitis is Tantamanda. And for people who are blind, but who want to cross over the ocean of material existence, he is giving them that light. Samsari nam karuna yeha purana He spoke this very confidential Purana of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Karuna yeha means out of compassion. The deep meaning here is this. That there are two types of persons. Persons who have seen Sri Krishna's pastimes and persons who have not seen Sri Krishna's pastimes. <laughs> These are the two categories. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Everything else just in unimportant, insignificant detail. <laughs> now, the persons who have not seen Krishna's pastimes, they cannot speak them. And the persons who have seen Krishna's pastimes cannot speak them. Why? Because those who have not seen have no experience, so they cannot describe it. And those who have seen, they feel so much love and separation that when they're about to speak, their voices become choked with emotion and they cannot speak. So how is it possible for Krishna Kata to manifest in this world? It's a miracle. So it said, Samsari nam karunayeha, karunayeha. Only because of Krishna's karuna shakti, mercy potency, came in the heart of Shukadeva Goswami and gave him the, this is called Darya Dharana Shakti. Darya Dharana. Darya means patience or composure. And Dara means to hold. 
if you become very emotional, you can't hold your composure. Right? So Shukadev Goswami, only remembering Radha and Krishna, the gopis of Vrindavan, he becomes very emotional and cannot speak. But Krishna, by Krishna's mercy, his Darya Dharana Shakti, the power to hold his composure came so that he could speak the Sri And he has such realization. In Radha Krishna Lila, Shukadev Goswami is the parrot of Radharani. So that parrot is in, on a perch in the Kunj where Radha Krishna are meeting. Sometimes when Radha, Radharani embraces Krishna, he is in such ecstasy that he faints. Then what Radharani is doing, Krishna doesn't know. But Shukadev Goswami sees. Sometimes when Radha Krishna embraces in ecstasy, Radharani faints. Then what Krishna is doing? But even Radharani does not. Who knows? Shukadev Goswami. Sometimes Radha and Krishna both faint. Then. <laughs> So then you'll have to go to Shukadev Goswami to find out what <laughs> So, samsari na karuna yeya purana gruham tam vyasa suruna upayami guru. Shukadev Goswami said, Oh Guru Dev, I bow down to you. You are the Guru of all the sages. And only by the power of Krishna's mercy could you manifest the sweetness of Radha Krishna's Vrindavan pastimes. So then, So then, <laughs> the bliss is going everywhere. So, so then Sukhi Goswami, he prayed, Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narutaram Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Daya Mudiraya He prayed to Bhakti Devi. He prayed to his father Vyasadeva. And to see Krishna, and then he began to answer these six questions. That's it. The answer only takes seven days. <laughs> <laughs> and nights, non stop. <laughs> so Sukhi Goswami, he began to speak. He said, Savai Pum Samparo Dharmo, Yatho Bhakti Adoksa Jay, Ahoy Tati Apratiyata Yatma Samprasiddhi. What is the ultimate benefit? For everyone, it is that by which you attain bhakti. And bhakti has a characteristic. One, it is causeless. Why do you serve Krishna? Because he's God? Wrong answer. Why do you serve Krishna? Because he's beautiful. Wrong answer. Why do you serve Krishna? Because you want to be liberated from this wrong answer. What is the right answer? Why do you serve Krishna? The answer is no reason at all. Love has no reason. It's spontaneous. It's a way to, it's not to get anything. It's not for any purpose except for 
to make Krishna to please him. Why? No reason. Just want to please him. That's love. And that love, Hoytuki, Apratiyata, is unimpeachable. It cannot be checked by anything. That means this love is like a flow of honey from a jar. If you have a jar of water and you throw it, then some drops will go here and it becomes separated, disjoined, discontinuous. But if you have honey in a jar and you pour it, it comes out in one big stream. So when the flow of your consciousness, all your feelings, your words and all activities are just uninterrupted cultivation of activities just to please Krishna. That is bhakti. And it cannot be stopped by anything. You will serve in your sleep. You will not stop when you sleep. That's bhakti. If you stop serving when you sleep, you are not doing bhakti. It cannot be stopped by illness. It cannot be stopped by any material suffering. Vaishnava era yato jeke dia bahar du Nishya janiya se parananda su Shila Vrindavanda Astakur said When you see a pure Vaishnava in this world and he's undergoing some type of tribulation or worldly difficulty Nishya janiya say you should know for certain that he's not suffering at all, he's experiencing Parananda Sukh, the highest transcendental bliss. This joy of devotional service, pure bhakti, it cannot be interrupted, even by death. Pure devotees, they chant the holy name and they're going to Samadhi. And they enter Krishna's Leela. And everyone else sees. Doctor comes, takes the pulse, oh, he's dead. Those who enter into pure bhakti, what to speak of, being interrupted by death. They're not even aware when death comes. They don't even notice it. It's a non-event. Because they're already situated in their spiritual body. So I think Yaprakirata, so Yatukya. Savaipum sam paro dharamo yato bhaktira doksajay. What is the supreme auspiciousness for everyone? It is that activity, that cultivation by which you come to that stage of pure bhakti. Oit kya prakirta. Unconditional, uninterrupted. Yayatma sam prasiddhi. Only that can satisfy your soul. Until the day we attain that bhakti, you are not satisfied. You cannot be. Feel fulfilled, even. So then, there were many persons in the audience. There were karmis and jnanis. They're performing their duties, brahmins doing sacrifices to go to heaven and things like that. So Sutta Goswami said, Dharmasya Hyapavargasya in Vedic culture, it's understood that when you do Dharma, you live piously. Then from that comes economic development or harmonious civilization. Don't think that there's you have a civilization because of economic and political policies. No. The only reason there's some semblance of civilization here in the West is because it's everyone's just living off the fumes of your forefathers who were Christians. And now people have left their religion. Oh, you are lucky you're just living off some fumes, but it won't last for long. Everything is in free fall right now. Unless people take up, take up the Dharma. I think probably you are coming together here and doing Sankirtan. And by the power of the Holy Name, some are holding basil together. So make sure you come every week and have Kirtan here. You are the hero, you are saving the whole of basil. 
Yes, without you, I'm not So, there's no economic development, there's no prosperity, there's no uh, order in society without Dharma. So first, in, these are called the four Purusharthas, so or four goals of life, discussed in the Vedas. Dharma, religious pious activity, leads to Artha, economic development and civilization. And then when you have that, you have Kaam. Kaam means when you have some wealth and facility, you can fulfill your desires. So then you try to fulfill your desires and when you've done everything that you wanted to do and found out that actually you're not satisfied, then you think, oh, I want liberation. So then moksha, liberation. So this, these are the stages that the people, general people understand in Vedic culture. But remember, the sages ask, what's the essence of the scripture? So the essence of the scripture is not to go through these four stages. That's not the essence of scripture. But at the same time, we see that people don't have the qualification. And it's impractical for everyone to just drop everything in society and just become a naked, wandering mendicant. <laughs> right? Also impractical. So, what is the scripture really telling us? Sutta Goswami is saying, Dharma syahya pavargasya. The performance of Dharma is not to get money and enjoy yourself and then say sour grapes in the end. But the Dharma, your Dharma should be performed only to become liberated from this world, to become transcendental. It is not to make money and it is not to fulfill desires and, the, and your desires should not be directed towards sense gratification. So he said, the meaning is, never direct your desires towards sensory stimulation. That's more or less what everyone just does today. Either they're making a plan how to stimulate their own senses, get some luxury and comfort, eh? or they may have a family, and they're making a plan together how we can all enjoy our senses together. <laughs> and that, that's called being nice. So, but Sutta Goswami said, no, 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 this is, this is all wrong. Whatever comes in your life, you should use it for only one purpose. Live, stay alive. Only for the Tattva Jigyasa. That means the investigation. The inquiry into reality. Live only for the purpose. To inquire into Tattva reality. Nato Yasche Karma Bi. He said nothing else should be the goal of your karma. And so what he's doing here is he's saying... You know all these prescribed duties, like for the brahmanas, the priests, the katriyas, the warriors, the vaishas, the businessmen, the sudras, the laborers, all the ashrams, the brahmacharis, the celibate students, the householders, the retired people and the sannyasis. What's that all about? It's not dharma, artha, karma, moksha. But rather, you should do all of your karma Whatever you're doing, every day of your life, if you're a mother taking care of your children, if you're a doctor working in a hospital, if you're a businessman managing a business, whatever you are, if you're a farmer growing food, you have to turn everything that you do into the investigation to find reality. And everyone can do it. And you should not do work for any other reason. So Krishna describes how to do that in the Bhagavad Gita. That when you work, without desiring the fruit of your work for your own uh, enjoyment, and you don't consider yourself to be the, the cause of the result of the activities, you leave everything in the hands of God, and you maintain equilibrium, 
And at the end of the day, you say, My Lord, everything I've done is only for you. Please accept this. Then what happens? Slowly, Rajagun, Tamagun goes away, and Sattvagun comes. And the mind becomes steady. And those in Sattva can very easily take advantage of Bhakti. When you're in Sattvagun, it's like dry wood. If you come in contact with the Sadhu, he can set you on fire in a moment. But if you're in Rajagun and Tamagun, then it's like wet wood. And he tries again and again, but it's just smoke. It takes some time, you have to, to dry out before the fire of Bhakti appears in the heart. So this is the essence of scripture, that every single person who is born has one duty. But you can function within your context of society and transform your life that everything you do is the investigation about the truth. So then one may say, if life is meant to investigate and discover the truth, the tattva, what is that tattva? What is it that you are trying to find? So then Sutta Goswami said, Vadanti tat tattva vitas tattvam yat jnanam Advayam Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavaniti Shanti. He didn't say, Hey guys, I know the truth, I'm going to tell it as it is. He said, Vadanti Tattva. Those persons who know the truth, they say, and I have heard from them, I met some persons who have seen that supreme reality. And now I'm going to tell you what they say. And they say that the reality is adwai, non-dual. It is beyond all duality. And it is addressed with three um, appellations. The terminology, there are three appellations for this reality. Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavan. That is called Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. Brahma, Paramatma, and Bhakti. Tatsada dana munaya, jnana vairagda yuktaya, pasyan tatmani tatmanam bhakta sutra grihitaya. Those persons who have faith, that means they have, faith means seva vritti. Faith doesn't mean believing in something for which you have no proof. That's not the Vedic definition of faith. The Vedic definition of faith is Sadhatu and Tan Opayava Jam Bhaktun Mukichita Vritti Vishesh. It's a special vibration of your consciousness, your Chitta Vritti, which is always attentive to acts of service. So it's a Seva Vritti. It's the ten. I want to serve. I want to serve. That's great. I am small and God is great. So I should serve. That's what I'm going to do. That's faith. You understand that fact and you try. That's faith. So those persons who have touched on the and they have a peaceful mind, they can do mana, they can meditate with a still mind. So having faith in the still mind, jnana vairagya yuktaya. And in the stillness of mind, they let go of attachment to all the things of this world. Then, Bhakta Sutta Grihitaya, when they engage in devotional service under the guidance of their spiritual master, then that person can realize these three things, Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Not three things, one thing, but there are three degrees of realization. Because the absolute truth is adwai, no duality at all. So what are these three levels of realization? First, Brahman. That Brahman is near Vishesh, has no discernible, intelligible characteristics at all. Near Vishesh. It is near Akar, having no form. It is near Shakti, having no potency, no Shakti. In that realization of Brahman, there's even no experience of subject and object. Only oh, Brahman. Uh, the light. It's not, you don't even see the light, you become the light. 
and there's no subject of oh. so that but that light is what yasya prabha prabhu jaraganda koti kosish vasesha vasudadi dibuti binna it is just the effulgence emanating from the body of Sri Krishna. Krishna in Vrindavan, this coward boy. He is also Brahman and Paramatma. But that aspect of him is not manifest for those who have pure bhakti, pure love, without any Aishwarya, yeah, knowledge of openness. So, Brahman is called the Nirvikalpa Pratyaksh. That means Pratyaksh means direct experience of Krishna, which is Nirvikalpa, in which your spiritual intelligence cannot discern any qualities. So the truth is one, it's just Krishna. But in that first stage, you cannot discern any qualities, but you experience his effulgence, that is called Brahman. Then the next level, Paramatma. Paramatma means the expansion of Krishna, who is in every atom, who is manifesting the entire universe. In fact, this universe is nothing but different forms. It's the Viratru, the universal form of the Paramatma. That's all there is. You think it's something else, you call it something else, but that's all it is, Paramatma, plain. Saha Shoshi Sha Purushaha Saha Saksha Saha Sapati Sabu Minda Sito Vritva Atyatista Dasangulam The universal form has thousands of heads, thousands of eyes, thousands of ears. You must be thinking it must be a pretty ugly person. What kind of circus freak is this? With all those heads and eyes. No! You're looking at the universal form right now. Here's one head, there's another head. Only the souls in Maya are taking, claiming this body is mine, this body is yours. In Srimad Bhagavatam it said, you'll have to take birth again in this world. As long as you make a distinction between your own stomach and someone else's stomach. Just think about it. When you're hungry, and there's only one samosa left. <laughs> And you're serving. And then some, somebody says, Oh, Prabhu, Prabhu, can I have one more samosa? It doesn't matter. Because you, say, you have to save something to service, right? So, save something. So, as long as you say, This is my belly, that's your belly. You're in Maya. This world is only the Virat Rup. And Krishna saw it in the 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Arjun saw. When, one minute, I was really worried. I was on this battlefield. And here I was with my brothers, and I've got these half-brothers on the other side. And now millions of people are going to fight, and I was really worried. I had a nervous breakdown, and I dropped my bow and said to Krishna, I'm not going to fight. Now Krishna's been persuading me, speaking transcendental solid. And then Arjun said, can you show me your Virat form, your universe form, Krishna said, sure. And then Arjun saw that actually there are not two sides in this battle. The whole thing on this side and that side is just Krishna. That's all there is. There's no stress, no strain, no drama, no problem. Nothing bad's happening. Want to know what that is? Truth is, the truth is nothing bad ever, ever happened in the past. Nothing bad is happening now, and nothing bad will ever happen in the future. And if you disagree, you're in Maya. You're in illusion. So Arjun, hearing, hearing the Bhagavad Gita from Krishna, he came out of illusion. Krishna asked him, is your mind now free from illusion? Arjun said, yes. Now everything. So, when you realize that the Supreme Lord in His expansion of Paramatma is manifesting everything, and there's no problem, everything is perfect, now you have Paramatma realization. And you can see the Paramatma in the heart of everyone. Vishnu form with four arms, smiling, very peaceful. But that is not the last step in realizing God. Brahmeti Bhagavan. The last step is 
That is God in full feet. Someone may say, but this Paramatma was man, I thought that was God. It looks like God to me. But it's not complete. That is also a vision of Krishna, but through an Upadi. There's a designation covering your eyes. Material energy has three stages. The gross material elements, the subtle material elements, and then current, just cause. Karan means cause, the energy of cause, before the elements even manifest. So, the gross material energy of the universe is called Virat. So when you see the universal form Paramatma as being everywhere, now you are seeing in every atom, now you are seeing here Dr. Shai Vishnu. The subtle material elements are called uh, uh, Hiranya Garbha. Hiranya Garbha. They're the subtle material elements. So when you see Krishna, but with the Upadi, the designation of the subtle material elements, now you see Garbha Dakashai Vishnu. Garbha Dakashai Vishnu. And when you see Krishna, but without the Virat, without the subtle material elements, only with Karan, the Upadi of Karan, material cause, now it's called Karanadakti Shai Vishnu or Karanadakti Shai Vishnu. So that's why there are three Vishnu. They're not three Vishnus. They're not three anything. The absolute truth is one. But when you're only experiencing Brahman, that is Nirvikalpa Pratyaksh, an indistinct perception. And then when you look at Krishna, but with the Upadi of the physical elements, you see Karadak, Karadak, uh, sorry, Kiradaka Shai Vishnu, Paramatma, that is the Paramatma of the individual souls and individual atoms. Then when you see with the subtle elements, you see Garbhadaka Shai Vishnu, he is the Paramatma of the individual universes. And then if you see only with Karan, then you see Karadaka Shai Vishnu, he is the Paramatma of the sum total of all the universes. So that's just Krishna with Upadi. But what is Bhakti, pure Bhakti? Sarva Upadi. Vinir Muktam Sarvopadi Vinir Muktam Tatparatvena Nirmalam Urishikena Urishikesha Sevam Bhakti Ujjate Bhakti is called the engagement of your senses in the service of Krishna's senses which is free from any Upadi and when you do that then you directly perceive the last feature the ultimate feature of supreme reality and that is Bhagavan who is Bhagavan? Ete Chamsa Kala Pumsa Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. Though Bhagavan has many forms, the original form is Krishna. And Bhagavan has been defined as Bhagavan. Van means one who is full of Bhag. Bhag means opulences. So he has six opulences Aisvaryasya, Samagrasya, Viryasya, Yasasasriya. Jnana Vairagyas Chaiva Sanam Bhagam Itingmana Bhagavan is defined as who has Aishwaryasya. Here, Aishwarya means that God is that person who inherently and naturally and eternally has all yoga siddhis. Do you know the yoga siddhis? Do you know some yoga cities? The yoga cities are Anima Lagima Mahima Garima Vasita Isita Kama Vasaita Prapti. So there, there are eight main yoga cities and there are ten secondary ones. So Anima means the power to become smaller than the smallest. So be, because he has the power to become the smallest of the smallest, Bhagavan himself can become Paramatma. He can appear in the heart of anyone. Anima. Lagima. He can become lighter than he can fly. Mahima. He's bigger than the biggest. He's the biggest and the smallest. At the same time, Karma Vasaita. He can fulfill all of his desires without ex any exertion whatsoever. Just by his will. So, these are the opulences of God. So that's called Aishwarya. 
to have naturally all mystic powers. Yogis do austerities to get some mystic power, then they use them and they, they run out of petrol and then they can't use them. They have to do more austerities to get more mystic power. But God has unlimited mystic power naturally without doing any austerity. So that's the first thing about God. Aiswarasya, Samagrasya, Virya. Virya means Sava Shaktiman. He has all Shakti. His spiritual potency, the spiritual world, his material potency, the material world, and his Tatasta marginal potency, us, the Jivas, the soul. All energies belong to him. As far as Yash. Yash means that he's famous, he's glorious. Yes, yes, a Sri. Sri means beauty. Gyan means knowledge. And Vairagya means detachment. So these are the uh, six opulences by which Bhagavan is defined. But these opulences, these are... If you realize Bhagavan with the realization of these six opulences, then you'll be trembling. Oh Bhagavan, you are so great, I am so small. You won't feel close. You cannot feel he's my friend or my son or my sweetheart. So, Bhagavan also has six sweet uh, attributes. So these are the six attributes in Aishwarya, in the mood of opulence. But Krishna also has six sweet attributes as well. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Vrindavan, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was staying in Puri, when he walked through the Jarikanda forest and finally he arrived in beautiful Brajamanda. And the whole of Vrindavan, all Braj, was in ecstasy to see him. Because Krishna has come back after five, 4,500 years. Now Krishna has come back. So the, the dust of Vrindavan was in ecstasy to be touched by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lotus feet. All the trees were... Yamuna, the waves of the Yamuna were rising up and approaching him to wash his lotus feet. So someone may say, but the dust of Vrindavan has been touched by the feet of Krishna and Radha and Yamuna. They are bathed in Yamuna. Why are they in such ecstasy? Why? Because Radha Krishna have embraced fully Every pore of the of, of the body of Sri Krishna is being embraced by every pore of the body of Radharani and they become Goranga. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so now that very form of Radha Krishna Milita Tanu, Prain Vilas Vivarta Bigraha of, of Radha and Krishna has come to Vrindavan. And as he's entering into Braj, the trees are their hairs are standing on the end in the form of many buds, new buds appearing on their branches. They're bursting into blossom. They're crying honey from honeycombs. And fruit is spontaneously manifesting on their branches, so the branches become heavy and do pranam, bow down. All the birds are singing. The cows. They see him and they come running and wherever he's going, he's dancing through the forest, chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. All the cows come running after him and they're licking his body. Even the deer, deer are very shy. Mahabhu sat down beneath the tree and the deer came. And he was stroking them and embracing them. And the bumblebees were humming in the fifth note, Radharani's favorite note that this Krishna played on. And cuckoo birds were singing in the fifth note also. And Mahaprabhu was just remembering the, his own Vrindavan pastime, but from the perspective of Radharani. So that time Mahaprabhu was sitting there and he saw. A, a parrot, a male parrot and female parrot flew and landed on the tree. And Mapu called, oh, Sukh, sorry, come, come, come. And he held out his hands. And one female landed on one hand and one male landed on the other. Mapu said, hey, boy. <laughs> so then the male parrot began to sing. 
He said, So Dariam Lalan Ali Daria Dalanam Lila Ramat Tandani. Oh, Krishna is Jagan Mohan. He is Bhagavan. And he has six attributes. But these six attributes don't make you tremble with fear and say, Oh God, please don't kill me. But these attributes, he's Jagan Mohan. That means he enchants and bewilders the mind of the entire universe. What are those sweet attributes? Saundaryam Lalanari Darya Dalanam means that see Krishna is so excessively sweet and beautiful that even though the gopis of Vrindavan they have patience, they're very great. They're very, they cannot be flustered. They have very steady hearts. But when they see the beauty of Krishna, then their diary and their patience is completely smashed. And they become anxious. Madhasiki Pits Jamu Putam Parilan Chitta Kunchitta Kachanikurambe Mukaritu Venu Hatatra Padavita Nava Nava Yuvati Kadambe Bosatu Mano Mama Madan Gopale Madan Gopal He's like Cupid himself and when see Krishna with his peacock feathers trembling and he puts his flute to his lips Vama Bahu Krita Vama Kapolo Valgita Brurad Apita Venam When he takes his flute to his lips, he places his left cheek on his left shoulder and places his And he puts the flute on his lower lip. And then, He takes his very soft fingers and places them over the holes of his flute. And then, he begins to play. And the sound of his flute is such that his mukunda, that means the happiness of liberation, mukti, ananda, kusita, dadati. The sound of his flute gives such a pleasure that it makes the happiness of mukti, moksha, nirvana disgusting. <laughs> so beautiful. And when Mukarita Venu and when Krishna's flute becomes Mukarita, becomes very talkative, then the gopis, Hatatrapadavita, all their shyness, their patience, their self-control, their fear of their elders, their fear of the criticism of society just vanishes. And they run to him. This is Bhagavan. Hmm? Brahma Iti, Paramatma Iti, Bhagavad, this is Bhagavad. The abodable sweetness, the essence of Bhagavata is sweetness. Madhurya Bhagavata Sa, Braja Koyali Paracha, Tasuka Vyasera Nandano, Stani Stani Bhagavate, Vaniyachi Janaite, Tasuni Mate Bhaktagan. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, the essence of Godhood is Madhurya, sweetness, enchanting, hypnotic, heart stealing, stealing your heart. That is the essence of Bhagavata. And that has been described by Shukadeva Goswami in Bhagavatam, from place to place. And when the devotees hear about that sweetness from Shukadeva Goswami, they all become mad, completely mad. When Krishna plays his flute, then he stands in a threefold bending form. The gopis think, what is this? Govardhan is a mountain eight miles high. 
so huge, so heavy. But when Krishna lifted go, then he was standing straight. Seems very nasty. Right? He's standing straight. But when he picks up his flute, he's crooked. This flute must be so heavy. Very heavy. And what is she doing? Krishna's not playing the flute. But the flute, she's singing. Because Krishna's kissing her. And the flute is so happy she's singing. And she's lying down. And even Krishna's giving her massage. <laughs> they see like this because this is the nature of those who have brain. Sarva Bhukti Sviyapat Sit Bhagavat Bhava Atmana Bhagavati Bhagavat Atman Esha Bhagavat Uttam Maha Uttam Bhagavat sees their own love in everyone else. So because gopis, the the heroines of Krishna, the lovers of Krishna, when they see the flute lying down, they think, oh, they become jealous. I wish I could lie down with Krishna. What's happening here now? Krishna's kissing her, Krishna's massaging her. So Saul Daryam. Lanali, Daya Dalanam, then Leela Ramastambani. That means that Lakshmi Devi is the goddess of fortune. She's the consort of Lord Narayan. She has all wealth, all success, all fortune. And she's always at the feet of Lord Narayan, serving him. But. When she hears Narad came to Vaikuntha and was telling about the Rasalila of Krishna in Vrindavan, and she became stunned. She stopped massaging. She could not move because she never heard such a beautiful pastime. And the next thing Lord Narayan noticed is, where's my wife? <laughs> and she left Vaikuntha and went to Vrindavan. And even today she's there doing austerities and begging for the mercy of Krishna that she can enter into this vast So how beautiful is the Leela of Krishna that even it causes Lakshmi Devi to be stunned. Viryam kanti tarvivarya And Krishna has Virya, he has strength. So the opulent feature of God, Virya also strength, that's one of his qualities, that he has all strength. He can manifest the universes. In the form of Lord Varaha, he can pick up the earth planet. In the form of Lord Nishimadev, he can defeat Hiranyakashipu, the tyrant who was terrorizing the whole universe. But Krishna, how does he use his strength? He picks up Govardhan like a ball. Biryam, Kandukita, Vibhariya. But why? Just to impress Radharani. <laughs> He's not using his, his strength to save the universe or whatever, create the universe. His strength, his sweetness, is he showing off and being a hero because he wants to attract the mind of Radhika and the gopis, especially Radhika. And the gopis as well, but that's not the They're just like the decoration on his romance with Radharani. Because they don't say that. But those who are Radhika's dasis, the maidservants of Radharani, they know better. Krishna's Madan Mohan, he can bewilder the whole universe. Mahaprabhu was listening to the parrots, telling how sweet are the qualities of Bhagavan, Krishna in Vrindavan. But then, the, then the, the, the sari, the female parrots, she began to sing. Radha Sangha Yadabhati Tada Madana Mohana Anyata Vishwa Mohopi Swayam Madana Mohita The female part said, yes, yes, what you say is true. Krishna is so charming. He bewilders everyone in the universe. He's Madana Mohana. But only when he's with Radharani. When he's standing next to my Radha, then he's so beautiful and he bewilders the whole universe. But if my Radharani will leave him, then he's not Madan Mohan, he's Madan Mohita. He himself becomes bewildered by Cupid. Krishna is wandering around in the forest of Vrindavan, looking, where is Radhika? Vibrajati laka kalindatalaya nilo ganilambaro dancha champakachat 
Chaddan chakkan chakkachampaka Ruchi raho na na rasulla asini Krishna prema payo da reina rasadena tyanta sammohini Gopendat madhavaladva Vijayate radeva brindatani Krishna is wandering in the forest. <coughs> this Vrindavan forest is not an ordinary place. It's not even made of trees or anything. It's made of baths. It's made of condensed love. And Krishna is looking. He sees Vibraja Tilaka. He sees the sesame flowers. And upon seeing the sesame flowers, Krishna is looking and he sees the Tilaka brother. It's called Tila, Radhani. He sees Radhani's Tila. Birbraja Tilaka Kalindu Taniya Niro Ganilambaro. He looks at the Yamuna River flowing. And the Yamuna River has dark blue waves. And seeing Yamuna, the waves in Yamuna River, he sees Radharani is walking and Radharani wears blue blue cloth. And Radharani's cloth is moving. When he sees the champak flowers which are golden, then he sees the golden body of Shimati Radhika and begins to feel many different types of raspulas, the increase of different waves of love in his heart. Krishna Prema Payoda Reina Rasadena. Krishna is, has astonishing qualities and his main quality is Prema Vasita that he is controlled by love he is Ishwara Parama Krishna the control of everything but in Vrindavan he is completely submissive and controlled by the love of Radhika Krishna Prema Payodarena he was walking through the forest and he saw a waterfall with the water coming down from the rocks there they did but only he saw the body of Radhika when she is perspiring and the perspiration is running down her chest and he became overwhelmed with praying. Gopendattara Ballava Vijayate Oh, oh, glories to Radhika that Krishna is so controlled by her beauty and her loving services that he cannot forget her for a moment and sees her everywhere in the forest of Vrindavan. Indeed, Radeva Vrindavan This Vrindavan is the outer manifestation of Radhika's love. Anya Radhi Doyamban, Mora Mana Vrindavan, Mana Bani Eka Kori Jani. Radhani said, For some persons, their heart and mind are one. But for me, my heart and Vrindavan are one. So that is Bhagavan. That's a long way from Brahman. That's a long way from Paramatma. That's a long way from Bhagavan Lord Narayan. The essence of Bhagavata is Madhurya, sweet, human-like charm, hypnotic beauty. And Krishna is very intimate with his devotees, very vulnerable with his devotees, and very submissive to his devotees. And especially he is most beautiful when he is with Radhika. That is Bhagavan. If he's not with Radhika, then he's not complete. Because Radha Purna Shakti, Krishna Purna Shakti Man, Dui Vastu Vednai Shastra Praman, Radharani is Purna Shakti, full potency, and Krishna is full Shakti Man. And these two are non different. So when those sages who were thinking about us asked the question in the, for us, Albert, what is the goal of life? What is our Shreya? And what is the essence of the scripture? So then Sutta Goswami was saying, the auspiciousness is to develop bhakti, for, and by bhakti to research the absolute truth. That absolute truth is Brahman, Paramatma, and ultimately it's just Bhagavan. And that Bhagavan is this sweet and beautiful, charming Krishna who has completely lost his patience and he is trembling in anxiety and separation and crying.
this Krishna who is crying in separation from Radhika. This is the Bhagavan, the Tattva. The search for which is our only purpose and auspiciousness in our life. Gaur Brahmanande! When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard the birds speaking like this, then quickly they flew away. Then Mahaprabhu looked and saw a peacock was dancing. And when he saw the neck of the peacock, you know it's dark blue but with shining, quite difficult to describe. Mahaprabhu remembered Krishna and he faded. He became unconscious. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his brother Krishna themselves have appeared in this Kali Yuga to show us the path of bhakti by his own example. So he's taught you, go to Vrindavan and do Parikrama. Right? Who's coming at Kartik? Is anyone coming for Kartik Parikrama? Yes. Hmm? So all those who have, who have your hands raised, look at the ones whose hands aren't raised and try to persuade them. You've got, you have about two months to change their mind. Okay? Everyone come for Prajmanda Parikrama one month and visit all the beautiful holy places of Radha Krishna Lila and hear the sweet pastimes, each pastime in the place, where not where it happened, where it's happening today. The Lila is still going on right now. And if you go there and hear the Lila in the place, you may just for a second see it, and then your life is successful. So please come to Braj Mandal Parakrama in the, what is it, October, October 13th, November 11th. 12. In Anandam Gaudi Ashram. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Are there any questions? No questions. Krishna's food is female, right? I can hear it. It's kind of mandarin talking. In the Brahma Samhita, it is said, Sriya Kanta Kanta Paramapurusha Kalpataravo Drumabhu Mischinta Mani Gana Mayim Tayamamritam Kata Ganam Natyam Gamanam Hiya Bangsi Priyasaki Bangsi Priyasaki Very dear Saki But the word, the word Vainu Vainu is masculine So sometimes the gopis they criticize hey, What is this? This Vainu is masculine and kissing Krishna This is wrong so they criticize. Or sometimes you think, oh, this Vainu is a feminine, Saki, but acting like a male. It means when lover and beloved mix, sometimes they exchange roles with each other, when they become very inspired. So, then gopis, they think, oh, just see, this Vainu is so shameless in front of us. She became in a male mood and drinking the nectar of Sri Krishna. So everything depends on which ras you're in. Like Madhya Shodhi will not think the, the flute is a Saki. Madhya Shodhi thinks this is a bam, bam, bam. <laughs> But the gopis, seeing, their, having, seeing everything with their own love with Krishna and seeing that imbued in everyone, and they become, actually to become jealous of an inanimate object is one of the symptoms of of, uh, of Mahabhav. To become actually, Radharani is Madanaki Mahabhav. One of the symptoms is to um, glorify an object which is not worthy of glorification, or to criticize an object being jealous of. It. That's one of the symptoms of Radhika's love. One of the symptoms of Anurag, which all the gopis have, is called Apraninya Apya Janmalalasa. The desire to take birth is an, even as an inanimate object, if it affords you the opportunity to get close to Krishna. So gopis praise. Gopyaki matra dayam kushalam sobeno damo darar sudamma pigopika osaki. What austerities did this piece of bamboo do in his previous life that now he's drinking the nectar of Krishna's lips? If I knew, I'll do those austerities so in my life I can become a piece of bamboo and also get to live with Krishna all the time. Always in his hand or in his turban or in his belt. Even at night when he sleeps, he puts under his pillow. Yes, I'll do the austerities. I want to be a bamboo. <laughs> Any question? 
Go back there. How to squeeze the, the last out from the bag of a time? Because when I read this, I have not the idea of the last. Nikam kal patro galitam palam shuka muka damrita drab samitam pibat bhagvatam prasmalayam pura pura skabu vibhav kaha. Srila Vyasadeva said, When Shukadeva Goswami spoke this Srimad Bhagavatam, it became even more sweet. The rasa was even more sweet than rasa. So it depends on hearing from a Rasik Vaishnava. You cannot access Srimad Bhagavatam by yourself. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, oh no, Swarup Damodara, the secretary of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, Jaha Bhagavata Pada Vaishnava Stane Ekanta Swaikaro Chaitanya Charani means if you want to know Srimad Bhagavatam, you have to go and sit at the feet of Bhakta Bhagavat, at the feet of a Vaishnava who is the walking, talking, living, singing, dancing, breathing Bhagavatam. Because there are two types of Bhagavat, Book Bhagavat and Bhakta Bhagavat. So that devotee, old Bhagavatam is living in his throat and the verses are saying, let me out, when they're jumping out. Uh-huh. So that Bhakta Bhagavat is called Bhakti Rasa Patra, like a reservoir full of rasa. So, Dui Bhagavata Dwara Diya Bhakti Ras, Tahara Ridoya Tara Premoya Bhakti. By the connection, by the action of the book and the person together, then they infuse the rasa into your heart. And then Krishna comes under your control. Once you have rasa, now Krishna comes knocking on your door. Can I massage your feet? So that's the power of Prema Rasa. It intoxicates Krishna even and he becomes your servant. But that Rasa comes from not the Bhagavatam itself, but by the action of the Bhagavatam book Bhagavat and person Bhagavat, the Bhakta Bhagavat. Satam prasangam mamavirya samvido bhavanti ritkana rasayana kata. Qatar is full of Rasa. When? Satam prasanga. When you have Sadhu Sangha the association of pure devotees. Then it becomes Bhavanti Ritkarna Rasayana. It becomes Rasayan, very delicious and a tonic for your ear and for your heart. It's a tonic for your heart because the advanced Vaishnavas, they tell Siddhanta, Tattva, philosophy, and they cut all attachments to this material world and give you a clear vision. And it's a, it's a nectar also for your ear because it sounds so sweet. And by that sweetness you become intoxicated. And gradually by hearing Sradharati Bhakti in Lukravisiti, one develops through the stages of faith, sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti, and then prema, prema bhakti. So, so Chaitanya Mahapu said, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Sastikoi, Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Sastikoi. Three times, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha. Always try to be in the association of sadhu. Sadhu means sadbhave, sadubhave. Who has a relationship with the eternal truth? Actual relationship with Krishna is a sadhu, not others. They are not sadhu. They may aspire, but they are not sadhu. Those who have realization of their relationship with Krishna, love for Krishna, who are relishing prema rasa, and all Bhagavatam is living in their heart and coming out with the force of a river. You have to associate with that. And you take bath in that river. The four Kumars, they said that the Leela of Krishna, Marubhita Charita, the Leela of Krishna is transformed into a narrative and comes out of the mouth of the sadhu. Then it goes in your ear and transforms back into the Leela again. So it's actually a transmission of, of Krishna's Leela directly heart to heart. And that's how you can taste the rasa. There's no other way.
Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Mati Kritam Gad Kutopi Labrate Tatalu Yam Apimula Mai Kalam Poti Janma Sukritana Labyate Ramananda Rai taught to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that even you do pious activities for 10 million births, even you practice Vaidhi Bhakti, say you're practicing Bhakti, you're doing everything, chanting, going to Mangalaji, you're doing everything. No rasa. No rasa. But you can purchase this rasa. There's only one price, that is greed. But this greed comes by associating with those who have greed. When we associate with rasic Vaishnavas and hear from them and see how they're relishing. Uh, I also want to rest. My life is dry. I am in a desert. Eating sawdust. I'm dying. And then you see a sadhu who is sinking in the ocean of nectar. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to associate and serve. Serving, serving and chanting. And then slowly, slowly, and now it is clear. And then one gets the samskars, impressions. To relish Bhakti Rasa, you have to have very deep impressions of Krishna Leela. But it comes from hearing. The sound vibration goes in. It stamps the impressions of the transcendental world into that. And they collect together. And when they become very deep, Gada Sanskar, then Bhav comes. And when they become deeper, then Bhav Bhakti turns into Ras. Bhakti Rasa. Good. <laughs> For my whole life, I just looked around to find the most advanced Vaishnava that I could find. And when I found that Vaishnava, I grabbed his boat and did sleep until he passed away. And when he passed away, I looked around and found the next most advanced to look at. Until he passed away. My whole life, I only grabbed onto the most advanced Rasik Vaishnava I could find in the whole, without considering whether they are a member of this organization or that institution. Or who has Rasa, has Rasa. But I want Rasa, who has Rasa can give Rasa. So you don't worry about anything. You just go where the Rasa is and you attach yourself there and don't let go. Until one of you die. <laughs> anyway, Rasik Vaishnavas never die. They just become unmanifest and if you continue to follow them, they stay with you also. 